Hi, hey, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Shelly and today is my September wrap up. So, I'm trying to remember if I had like any special reads except for the book club pick of the month. I don't think so. I had my TBR books. But I think the book club pick is the only, like, must-read book. That sounded very serious. It's not that serious. But speaking of the book club, let's just start with the book club pick, shall we? So, um, for the book club pick for September for the Chaos Court uh, was The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. So this is a book that I've been wanting to read for a very long time, as well as um, The Night Circus, also by Erin Morgenstern. I don't have that book, so I've not read that one yet. <laughs> However, back to The Starless Sea. So, um, I didn't really know anything about this book going into it, which is very me to not know anything about the books, let's be honest with ourselves. Um, the only thing I sort of knew was that it was like a book within a book. Um, and yes, it is kind of like a book within a book, within a book, within a book kind of a story. Um, so we follow this kid, this kid, we follow this guy called Zachary Estra Rawlins. Because that is basically any time he has like a... POV <laughs> chapter, that is how those chapters are started. Um, so we like switch from every chapter, every other chapter is like his point of view or it's like the book or the story within the story kind of a thing. This book had me intrigued from like very early on. It took me a minute to like get into the rhythm of the the story within the story and then Zachary's story and so on and so I thought that's not strange that is always me because I just want like point A to point B no in-betweens <laughs> uh, not always but it is usually how my brain works I just want a, like a straight line and like beginning end <laughs> Uh, that is usually how my brain works, and that is usually how my brain works easiest. I don't think I'm alone in this, so yeah, what am I even saying anymore? So, reading this book, the more you get into it, the more you're like, what is even happening? And yes, I had no idea what was even happening. A lot of the time, it's like, does this book even have a plot to it? Because, um... When I reached the ending, I was a bit confused. I mean, I, 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 I know what happens, but I'm a bit confused. <laughs> I think this book is mostly a, like, a love letter to bibliophiles, <laughs> really, or book lovers in general. Um, so I enjoy this book, but I have no idea what it's about, really. <laughs> Um, but uh, the writing made me really want to read The Night Circus now because now I want to know um, what The Night Circus is all about which I have heard that Caraval, the series that I have read is a lot reminiscent of The Night Circus and now having read The Starless Sea I really want to re read The Night Circus because it's written by the same author so now I need to know more and the Erin Morgenstern has only written these two books and it's like 10 years apart so I'm guessing we're not gonna get a third book until like 2050 or something like that and yeah that should be interesting but um if you want a confusing book <laughs> that's basically just a love letter to book lovers um yeah and if you actually know what it's all about tell me <laughs> Because I want to know. Um, yeah. Heat waves and reading is not conclusive to working brain functions. Okay, okay. And then I read 500 Miles From You by Jenny Colgan. So, 
in this we follow two people we follow lisa or lisa i'm not really sure because it's spelled with two s's and also what's his name cormac so cormac lives way up north in scotland somewhere and, and lisa lisa whichever we want to say lives down in london both of them go through sort of a let's say midlife crisis it's not actually a midlife crisis but they sort of go through a we need a change kind of a thing so they both um well i think lisa the girl let's call her the girl she goes through this like she's she's more like into it whereas cormac has more been forced to do it by someone else who thinks it's a good idea for him to get as just change of scenery kind of a deal so basically what happens is Cormac and the girl <laughs> they change places so basically she goes and lives in his house and he goes and lives in her I want to say like dormitory kind of a deal because it's not actually she kind of like rents a room in like the hospital work place thing I don't know what it's called I don't know um so they bo both work in like hospital work environments things um basically what they do is they um they go to patients houses that's what they do so they change places but at the same time because they are sort of like taking over each other's patients they have this communication to like let you know how so-and-so patient works and um, what's the easiest way to deal with so-and-so patient. While they're having this communication, they're also sort of like starting flirting with each other. We love that. Um, <laughs> so basically they start a long distance relationship, not actually having spoken to each other for real, but sure. But they're living in each other's places, because what? not um it was very cute i highly enjoyed this book this was a lot easier to read than a lot of jenny colgan's other books and i usually prefer her i mean i i really like her books she has like bakes bakery stuff she has sweet stuff she has book stuff i mean by stuff i mean book series <laughs> that like our center around these topics and hospital environment stuff is not my it's, it's not one of my faves however we don't get a lot of that i want to say nonsense but it's not actually nonsense we don't get a lot of that so um i really enjoyed this book i really really like this one um i want to see more from these two characters which is a possibility because i think this is a part of the the mure mure more series the place i don't know how to uh, pronounce the name of yeah i also read pictures of lily i also read pictures of lily by page two to begin with uh lily and her mum they leave england because lily's mum has found a new man basically lily's mum has been one of those that goes from man to man <laughs> and just moves up and leaves wherever they are living um for the next man in line basically uh but this is the first time they've left england and gone all the way to australia because why not <laughs> i don't know what's his name again the man that lily's mum moves them into he has a son as well um lily and the son end up being very close friends friend lily and the son end up being very close friends throughout the years of their life um but the the man lily's mum's man i don't remember his name it doesn't say on the back um he works at the at the zoo where they live not in sydney but in australia and he sort of gets lily this summer job and while there she meets this man who just happens to be 10 years older than her and she's 16 at the time by the way so not the greatest thing um they very much hit it off they don't do naughty things don't get me wrong here they don't do naughty things um but well they kind of do because they get the feelings for each other 
Um, anyway, he end up, ends up leaving to get married <laughs> in England of all places and they don't see each other for like another 10 years or so and then all of a sudden he is back and now she has like a fiance are they fiance i think so now she has a new man anyway she has a new man and like has a good life and all that but now the boy from her 16 year old life that doesn't make any sense the boy she the boy he was 20 something at the time yep he was a bit older than her let's let's remember that um they end up meeting again and now she's conflicted i mean who wouldn't be um it was so cute i really really loved the um the sue bits of it i was like oh, this is adorable i want a more of this sue life it was cute and <laughs> i have so many books to go through here and also read the house of new beginnings by lucy diamond so first off it took me a while and i know it says on the back but it took me a while to understand that this house that they talk about in the book is in brighton and not in london i was confused for a bit because um there was like a character that was in london but they lived in this house in brighton but they were always mentioning london so i was like are we in london are we in brighton where are we um so basically we follow a bunch of different characters who lives in the same building um and they are all there for different reasons but basically uh what ends up happening along the way is that they all sort of like get new beginnings to life because who doesn't need that didn't enjoy this as much as i would have liked to um it was it was a good read but there were so many moments that I was so confused about who or what or where that eh, it's it's such an easy thing i feel to like just write <laughs> write the character's name, write the place in, just be more descriptive and don't make me think so much. I, d I don't like that much thinking, okay? I just want to read. And then we have The Mum Who'd Had Enough by Fiona Gibson. So this was a hilarious read. Um, so basically, um, the mum had enough and she leaves a note on the table and upper leaves so mostly we follow Nate and his confusion of it all why his wife Sinead have just left him and left him by leaving a note nonetheless he basically thought they were having a good life and like there were no nothing was actually wrong and I think what happen, it happens is mostly that Sinead is bored. <laughs> she just wants a change. And uh, she does that by just leaving. Following Nate around, who is like the sweetest guy ever. And you're like, Sinead, why are you such a bitch? Why are you such a bitch? It's very much a contemporary where we think about what it actually is to be nice. To have like, is being nice the only thing you need? How do we get back to normal? What is wrong with easy peasy? What is wrong with easy peasy? This is what I want to know too. <sighs> Moving on to The Flip Side by James Bailey. So we follow, what's his name again? <laughs> We follow Josh, who basically has his life turned upside down. Everything goes wrong from the start, and then he finds this coin, and he starts flipping it and lets it make, make his decisions on what he's going to do. And he does this with everything. 
Um, so once things start to get, like, good for him after this coin flip thing, um, he actually goes and tells this girl, this new girl, because he's been dumped, that's one of the things that goes bad. He tells this girl that he flips a coin to see if she'd, like, date her or not. And I was like, you stupid man. <laughs> you idiot. Um, yes, I think he should be honest with her, but at the same time, the way he does it is like, you stupid idiot, you're ruining a good thing here. Um, everything does end up well in the end, but going through this journey where he literally makes decisions based on a coin flip. How can you do that? That's not great. I mean, it's great to begin with um, when you like when you're feeling like stuck in a rut and you need to like make some fast decisions to like just move forward. So starting that coin flip, I get it from the beginning, but then it gets to be a bit too much. Um, I do really like the little the little bunny here, though. It's very cute. But yeah. <laughs> There, there, comes a, just, there comes a time when you just have to put that coin down and stop flipping it to make your decisions. Just pick. Just make up your own damn mind. Jesus. <sighs> okay. So many books. Whew. So many books. So many books. Uh, then we have Kate in Waiting by Becky Albertalli. This is a book... Um, I haven't heard much about it, but I've heard it mentioned so many times, especially Becky Albertalli. So basically, we are in, uh, I want to say high school. What's her name? I must say Becky, but no, her name is Kate. <laughs> it says on the front, fucking hell. Okay, so Kate and her best friend Anderson. Yes, uh, they are like super close super close and yeah in walks a boy of course oh and anderson he's gay by the way so it's like they fancy the same people basically ah <sighs> yeah so in walks a boy and kate is like positive like that this boy is interested in her and she don't know how to tell her best friend this and then at the same time Anderson is keeping secrets from Kate yay there's so many things in this book that could have been solved with communication <laughs> It was a cute, easy read, but not necessarily one I would, like, recommend or want to read again. But I read it, so I'm not unhappy about that. <sighs> Moving on to The End and Other Beginnings by Veronica Roth. So this is basically just a short story collection um, with uh, one, two, three, four, five, I think six different short stories um most of them i think are like i think most of them were from like random stuff but one of them is also from um the carve the mark world um which was like uh yeah this was definitely one where i question if we actually needed it as short stories go though, um, they weren't bad, they just felt a bit unnecessary, maybe? Um, but I will give uh, her credit for actually being able to write short stories without like other references because I don't know what the other references would be. That was a lot of S's. Moving on, moving on. Another Jenny Colgan book, this time, The Bookshop on the Shore. So, in this one, we, um, we actually, it's part of the, I want to say it's the bookshop of happily ever, or oh, the happily ever after. It's something along that, let's see. 
It doesn't say on the back. The Little Shop of Happy Ever After, that's what the book is called. So, um, basically that book, it's a bookshop in a van. And we come back to this van here. Okay, so in this one, we follow Zoe. Zoe is a single mother living in London, and she's not having the best time with her baby daddy, let's call it. Basically, she gets given this opportunity. She gets recommended to um basically become a living nanny for this family of uh three kids and a single father um as that develops and her relationship with her son and all that develops and she learns more about her son and so on and so forth uh she's also uh like moonlighting not really but like her day job is basically um running this um ban bookshop because what's her name again the girl that owns the van bookshop um is pregnant and uh, can't really work as she has previously so um zoe is basically doing two jobs while still trying to maintain life <laughs> Um, I really really enjoy this one. It was it was heartwarming going back to that same um, the, the setting um, Where the whole bookshop is and and going from there really so I highly recommend this one And then I also read chasing Daisy by page tune and this um, We followed Daisy and she's um, What's it called? She's working in the formula one world um she's not a driver she's one of the helper people <laughs> the guest services or something anyway she works closely with uh the formula one drivers and and such uh she just happens to also be kind of in love with one of the drivers um who happens to be in a relationship with his childhood sweetheart um who's not there but um still <laughs> um so there's a there's a big drama while daisy's going through this heartbreak heart crush heartbreak crush item i'm not sure what to call it um she's also learning to like other people around her so she does get close to her driving driver crush <laughs> um but it's not it doesn't end well let's let's say that and um going through that extra heartbreak after it's kind of what we're dealing with in this well most of what we're dealing with in this book um highly highly recommend as well because uh although it might seem a bit heartbreaking and sad at times um it does end on, ha on a happy note so kudos <laughs> And then I read Midnight in Everwood by M.A. Kusner, Kusner um, which is a nutcracker retelling, that's the one. It made me realise that I don't remember the whole nutcracker story as much as I thought I did. <laughs> at some point I might have to revisit it to, and then come back to this book and see because I felt like I was missing something when I was reading this book and also um yeah well basically I felt like I was missing something. It was a very cute story and it was a um I mean it had like scary moments, it has cute moments, it had confusing moments um but all in all it was a uh, very decent read um, but I did feel like I was kind of missing something and I'm not sure if it's because I don't remember the Nutcracker retelling with the, the Nutcracker story Jesus I don't remember I don't know if it's because I don't remember the Nutcracker story as much as I thought I did or because it wasn't um, explained in the right way in the story if it was actually something that's missing in in the story story this story <laughs> my goodness <laughs> but all in all very easy read um i love the fantastical elements of it it was very very like fairy tale story time okay and the last book i read was on a light like this by lindsay kelk just give me all the 
it actually gives me Christmassy feels and it's not actually a um, Christmas book. Wow, words, where are words today? So in this we, what's her name again? Fran. So we follow Fran and she kind of accidentally, accidentally on purpose, accidentally ends up uh, going to this like fancy secret ball where all the celebrities go and she kind of ends up in there and then she kind of gets whisked away <laughs> on a very weird adventure and one that she shouldn't be on but at the same time she kind of should be um i'm so not doing a good job explaining this book um it was a wild ride let's call it that full of hilarity that is lindsay kelk's books in general it's it's a gorgeous love story like marion key says right here <laughs> Oh my goodness, um, I've moved some books now because the camera overheated so I kind of moved some away. Um, I read a bunch of books, I want to say 12? Maybe, maybe not, possibly. Um, decent read, decent read. I feel there were more um, good reads this month than there were the previous month. I don't know I might enjoy myself more, 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 more. so yeah um, a lot of rambling on about absolute nonsense but that is me in a nutshell I'm not sure what I can do to change that let's be honest so thank you so much for watching until next time take care oh, bye -bye.